Okay guys, so I just finished making this focaccia bread in my uh, Wolfgang Puck 2 pound 14 function bread maker and it's right here but um, I just leave it open after I'm done so it cools off. But um, I <laughs> have a little mess there from when I did that. I want to give um, a few pointers. Um, well, I will have a link to this in the description box to the uh, machine. I'm assuming you already have it, but if not, it'll be there. Uh, it's an affiliate link, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So before we get to this bread, I want to show you one of the bigger issues is this measuring cup. Because it's hard to tell what is going on with this. It says eight ounces, it has 200 milliliters, a three quarter cup, a cup says maybe up to the arrow. Sorry, I should have shown you guys that. I was out of frame. So a cup says up here. Again, it has like milliliters, other cups. It's hard to measure after you're actually using it. I need to check if this is actually the same as a one solid cup. You know what I'm saying? Like fill it up and pour it in here because it, something is weird about this. If you use this, you might get a good bread, and you might not. But let me show you what I mean in the next one. Because if you saw the focaccia video, you'll see the focaccia that I made before is about half the size. And it's exactly the same recipe. I didn't change anything other than using my own measuring cups. But let me show you what that... Um, we'll just talk about it right now, and then I'll come back to um, take this loaf out of here. And I'll talk a little bit more about troubleshooting. Before we get on with the um, whole wheat tutorial, I want to show you something real quick. I am making a bread today, so this is obviously spliced in. It's another focaccia, the same recipe on the ultra fast focaccia bread. And I want to show you something really quickly, the difference here. Look at this. It's a nice dough ball. If you guys watched the other video, it looked like water. It was very watery. It's still made of a little bread, but not anywhere close to this. So, what's the difference? Um, I used their little measuring cup, that plastic measuring cup that came in here. And if you guys remember in the first initial video, I was like, I don't even know what this what's measuring because it says eight ounces it stops lower than the top of the cup I don't know where the cup is right now and then um, on the other side there's like millimeter or milliliters and just weird so don't use that measuring cup and to be honest I've seen video or reviews on HSN saying how they're branching out this way it didn't do this it didn't do that and I think that's the reason because um, I did try it again just using that cup um, later on and the bread fell in the middle because it didn't have enough flour. That cup, I don't know what it measures. Okay, let's get going. I can't stress this enough. This cup right here, I don't know. I guess I could take the time to measure out flour and see what it is, but don't, I, I rather, I would just use my own measuring cups. I think this is really, check this out. Literally the only difference from making the bread I made with the focaccia yesterday or a couple days ago, whenever it was, and now, because I'm just making an extra one, is that, and look at this. Look how beautiful it is. It's puffed up really nicely and I used a real measuring cup and not that one. <laughs> okay, so I would just say don't use the measuring items that are in this uh, kit. Okay, so I think that's tip number one. I wouldn't use that measuring cup anymore, um, just personally, because supposedly, and the Zojirushi machine I have has something similar like this and that, you know, you use it for the water, you use it for the measuring. It best, it's best not to. Um, with my Zoe machine, it works fine, I don't know, but Obviously, it's probably designed a little bit different than this one. So, this is for your dry ingredients, your measuring cups, and use a liquid measure like the Pyrex, like one of these glass ones, or any one that looks like this, right? Even if it's plastic or whatever it is, um, for your liquid ingredients. So that's, you know, we all know baking is a science and it's very particular. Like, have you watched this thing as it's deflating a little bit? Because it's cooling off. Oh, it feels so good. So I didn't think anything was up with it when I made the focaccia video with the ultra fast cycle because it was like half the size. I'm like, well, you know what? Focaccia is supposed to be kind of padded out and it's probably just a small batch recipe. But look how big this is. Exactly the same recipe from the Wolfgang Puck um, instruction manual. So I want to talk about a little bit of that. So the only thing different was I used my dry measures, right? My own measuring cup. When you're making bread, <laughs> use the flour that the recipe calls for and most of the time they're going to ask for a bread flour do not use a regular flour it doesn't have enough like umph which would be the gluten and things that are going to develop to make you a nice loaf of bread it's going to be maybe not make bread at all <laughs> it might be a little dense it just doesn't work the same so i always get uh king arthur unbleached bread flour i don't want to be too technical about this because i don't want people to be afraid of like oh you know it doesn't have to be king arthur i mean gold metal has it you want bread flour the unbleached part is my preference, so unbleached bread flour, but it has to be bread flour, okay? So don't just use all-purpose flour. Some uh, recipes you can, 
If it says all-purpose flour, you can use all-purpose flour. Most of the time you want your bread, unbleached bread flour. So always, whatever the recipe says, use that. Like I have a recipe here. Oh, I made this bread the other day. Actually, I used the dough cycle in the machine, so I'll show you guys how to do that soon. This is a sandwich rye bread. It's so good. Oh my gosh. And um, it took something weird because this happens a lot in bread recipes. Instant mashed potato flakes or a potato flour. Uh, unbleached bread flour, just like it says, and pumpernickel, which I also get from King Arthur. But um, today I went out and bought some rye bread, uh, rye, uh, medium rye, sorry, uh, flour, because I want to make some rye bread, like actual rye bread. So, so yummy. So always get what the uh, recipe asks for, okay? Um, what else? The uh, yeast. So let me grab the yeast that I use. And I've shown this to you guys many times. Keep your yeast in the refrigerator or the freezer, it will last longer. Um, and I keep it in one of these Tupperware little tubs inside a plastic bag because it only came in this weird kind of thing that I had to cut open. Um, Red Star Active Dry Yeast. I don't care if the recipe asks for quick, uh, like, what's it called? Quick yeast or like something faster like that. I still use just this one. This stuff is, to me, the champ. I love it. When I was a kid, I remember we only had Fleischmann's in that little brown kind of jar and use it. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there, or those little packets. I buy it like this. It's like a two-pound brick. They sell it in smaller portions. You don't have to buy a two-pound brick. But just active yeast, like what you saw there. Again, keep it in your fridge, keep it in your freezer so it lasts longer and works better. Okay, water. When you put in your water, I always start with warm water. I've talked about this in different videos, but I want it to be just here, all that information. You don't want boiling hot water. It's going to kill your yeast. You don't want it to be too cold because then it's just that much longer for this to come to temperature and for it to start working and you're using a bread maker so I always start with warm water so like from the tap you know like if your water comes out kind of hot a little bit cooler than the hottest right if you want to zap it in the microwave only 20 or 30 seconds just the littlest amount of zapping it to warm it up you don't want it hot um, again I always say I'll put the temperature in there what temperature <laughs> kills the yeast but um, if I remember I will put it in there um, so yeah, I mean, everything else, even if you put the stuff in order wrong, like if you put the flour first and the water, you always want to put your liquid things in first, like I've shown you in the last videos. Then, you know, your flour and everything else. It's fine. Ba baking is a science. It has to be exact. The other thing is, uh, like the other day I messed up with the salt, so it didn't affect the bread, because salt really is for taste. It's not so much for reaction, you know what I'm saying? It's not the chemical reaction really what you're looking for, or it's not chemical at that point. It, that would be like baking soda or baking powder. Um, and this one is the uh, yeast, right? Yeast eats sugar, so whatever sugar you put in here, if it's honey or sugar or whatever, it's gonna eat that, and that's what makes the bubbles and it makes it all good. The salt actually would kill your yeast. So that might be another reason why my, remember I went overboard on the focaccia and the salt. So it might have affected the way the yeast acted that day too. Bread flour. <laughs> Just warm water, a good yeast, um, use your own measures and make sure they're dry, you know, measures, measuring cups, measuring spoons for your dry stuff and then your cup like this kind of thing for your wet measures. I was reading the reviews on HSN only because I was curious because somebody, uh, one of my subscribers had mentioned that she wasn't sure about the machine because she saw some reviews that maybe were kind of like so-so. And yeah, a lot of people had the same, the ones that were upset about their purchase was because um, they said it made like a, it sunk in. Okay, so again, do not kill your yeast. Use bread flour. I have a feeling they're using just regular flour because that will happen. Because it just doesn't build up the gluten it needs to like do what it needs to do with the structure and everything. Um, I think those are the three, like three or four things that really I wanted to address. And um, again, as far as recipes that fit in here, I don't think I would put six cups of flour in here. I think you should stick with recipes that are like four max out at like four cups of flour. Like the one I put in here is sandwich rye and this is just from King Arthur flour. Um, it was two and a half cups of the bread flour and one and a third cup of pumpernickel. So that's three and you know roughly four cups eh, give or take of flour and I think that's a good max. Um, some recipes ask for like six cups of flour because you can make two loaves. You can try it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm saying probably four, four and a half cups of Flour should be the max what this will hold. Um, and yeah, and then people are asking me about, you know, and like I said, for me, the reason I like this, and it's on my counter, and it's been on my counter since I got it, and I've been making bread every other day, if not uh, more often, um, it's because we love bread anyway, but 
Um, and then now there's five of us. And when it was only two or three of us, it was a different story. I, this would be too much bread. A two pound bread maker, and you can make a one and a half pound too. You don't have to go two pounds. Um, and that small size that just fits there is rare. Because like my Zojirushi is like this big for the two pound. I can't even get my hands in here. It's huge. And the mini is cute and he's tall like this, but he only makes a little like one pound, maybe, maybe one and a half. I think he only makes a one pound loaf. So those are the reasons I like it. Just like anything else, you gotta learn your craft. I know one gal had left a comment saying that she was gonna add nuts, so she put the nut function, and then, um, you know, as she's going through, and then she chose to make the bread um, dark crust, and when she pressed dark, it kicked off the nut function. It went back to um, no, right, with the X. She's also, just know that, that when you press, <laughs> if you choose the color of the bread after you've cho selected nuts, go back and press the nut function again. And I heard some people say, hey, the nut function never worked, or blah, blah, blah. So it could possibly be that they did not, you know, they went out of order as far as it kicked it back because it's a new thing you pressed, right? So always pay attention before you press start, you know, this is set, this is set, I got this, let's go, right? So, and that's with any bread maker, so hopefully these tips will help you with any other bread maker you have, because um, that's just how it is. So let's turn this guy out, because he is lovely. Oh, it's still hot. Oh my goodness. Okay. Totally different loaf than yesterday's, or a couple days ago, whenever it was. I've been making this on my own, too, so <laughs> look at that steam. I'm going to put this down. And he is just lovely. We'll get this away from here. Um, wow. Oh, okay, the paddle stayed in the in the bread maker, so that's good. I don't have to fish it out. Look at that. So pretty, and it tastes so good. Even when I messed it up that day, it still tasted great, but it just wasn't this high. It was about this big. I'll have a picture comparison right now. Okay, well, I'm not going to cut them open, but, um... Again, just dip them in some olive oil, some balsamic, the little herbs, just the way it is. Um, I basically made this for panini, so I'm going to cut it this way. You know what I'm saying? The loaf. Not long ways like this, but I'm going to cut it going this way for that great panini. Um, and maybe some turkey, because focaccia tastes great with turkey, but whatever it is that you like. And yeah. So, hope that helps you guys with a few little tips, and thanks for um, you know all the questions you ask. If I know the um, information, I will definitely respond. Oh, the one last thing is that all the recipes in this ask for kosher salt. And that's typical a lot of times of um, recipes, but like this is King Arthur, they're not asking for anything specific. They're just saying one and a half teaspoons salt. So I did pick up some kosher salt and I'm gonna have that for the next few uh, tutorials. So I do have the kosher salt. The one I had before was like the really thick um, canning salt. And you know, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for kosher salt. Where did I put the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told myself to have it here so I can show it to you guys. Let me think about where I put it. I'm gonna go grab it. Where is it here? No. Okay, let me go grab it real quick Sorry, to show I you. Put it away because I'm such a good girl. So the other salts you might see are like, it's gonna say coarse canning salt or coarse kosher salt. This is the one I got. It's diamond crystal. I just got it at the grocery store. Pure natural kosher salt. Uh, does not supply iodide, a necessary um, nutrient. And let me show you the texture of this one. It's very light. It's, it looks coarser, obviously, but it's not coarse like the kind that you use for canning, okay? So that's all I wanted to show you guys. So yeah, so I hope those tips help you out. Usually when a recipe asks for salt, they just mean table salt, right? Uh, the ones in the Wolfgang Puck, all of them have asked for kosher salt, and that's why I picked that up, so I can use it for these recipes. And I did use that in here today. And look at the beautiful, but like, this is oh, so pretty. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that I answered most of your questions or I troubleshooted some, if you had some issues. Oh, before I go, look, this is the pumpernickel bread I made. And the pumpernickel is very interesting. It had a lot of things in it. Oh, it smells so good. I asked for caraway seed I didn't have, so I used fennel and mustard and whatever else I asked for. But really nice, thick stuff. Like, you want to cut this really thinly. But anyway, um, I just want to show you that because I did make this in there the other day. And it came out great. All right. Um, I did transfer it to a loaf pan, though. That's why it's the smaller shape like this. But I did make the dough itself in the machine. All right, guys, thanks. One last tip before I go. Um, if you're going to use your own recipe in here, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but um, you probably don't want to put a recipe in here to bake that has more than maybe four and a half, five cups of flour. Because even when I do a, like a four cup flour, sometimes it gets pretty high. So um, if you use like a six cup flour recipe, you're probably 
I'm not gonna wanna bake it in here because it might just get way too tall. You can do the dough function, you know, and let it rise in here, but I wouldn't bake it in here, okay? So if you're gonna pick out your own recipes, like I said, maybe don't use, don't bake recipes that require more than four and a half or five cups of flour or so. Okay, all right, well I hope all that helps and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.